One of the big ideas in physics is the concept of equilibrium. For the most part, your definition of equilibrium is the same as scientists. Objects in equilibrium are stable. First, we need to consider an object that is not moving is considered to be in static equilibrium. That is actually what the word static means, that there is no motion. Take the two kids balanced on the teeter-totter. If there is no motion associated with the board, we know a couple things. First, we know that the net force acting on the board is zero. We also know that since the system is not rotating, the net torque must be zero. Now keep in mind this does not mean there are no forces or no torques acting on the system, because actually there are quite a few of each. It just means that the net force and the net torque in all directions are balanced. If we look a little closer at our teeter-totter, we can get a better idea of the forces acting on the board. There is a force upward on the pivot point. The boy on the left has a certain mass, and that is being pulled down by gravity, while the girl on the right has a certain mass that is also being pulled down by gravity. The key idea here is that all of these forces add up to zero. So if the first child has a mass of 26 kilograms and sits 1.6 meters from the pivot, and the second child has a mass of 32 kilograms, how far is she from the pivot? Well, if the teeter-totter is balanced, or in equilibrium, then both sides are even. If you have ever been on a teeter-totter, you know that the lighter child must sit further back from the center than the heavier child in order to achieve that equilibrium. Both children are exerting a torque on the board around the supporting pivot. The boy is exerting a positive torque, while the girl is exerting a negative torque. Since the board is in fact balanced, then the two torques must be equal to each other. We are trying to find the distance that the girl must sit from the pivot point in order for the board to balance. The forces being applied by each child are a result of each child's weight. Since the board is balanced, these forces will act perpendicular to the board, so we do not need to worry about any angles at this point. So to solve for the distance, we can take the mass of the boy times his distance from the pivot times gravity, divided by gravity times the mass of the girl. So even better, we can get rid of the gravity expression since it is on both sides of our equation. From here, we can plug in our knowns and solve for a distance of 1.3 meters for the girl. As you might expect, the distance the heavier child needs to sit from the pivot point is a bit less than the distance of the smaller child. So then what is the perpendicular force exerted by the pivot on the board? Remember that one condition for equilibrium is a net force of zero, which, in, which is the sum of all the forces acting on our system. It is pretty straightforward then that the upward force of the pivot will be equal to the sum of all of the downward forces acting on the board. Again, we have all the information and just need to plug in those numbers, and we get 568 newtons of force. We have looked at objects that are in static equilibrium, and we have shown that those objects have both net torque and net force equal to zero. So now we are going to look at whether or not those objects are stable. To start out, we need to talk a little bit about a system's center of mass. Take a sphere, for example. The center of mass for a sphere is in the very center. This is true because every point along the sphere is an equal distance away from its center. What if we have two identical spheres in our system? If we imagine a line connecting the center of those two spheres, we could easily imagine a point in the center that would allow them to balance in equilibrium. But what if one of the spheres was smaller than the other? Would that pivot point still be in the center? This situation becomes really similar to our teeter-totter situation now, doesn't it? The Earth-Moon system is a pretty cool example of this. The Moon, even though it is a long ways away, is significantly smaller than the Earth. As a result, this rotation results in a center of mass actually slightly inside the Earth. Now for our purposes, we are not going to get into how to calculate the center of mass. For us, all we need to know is that the center of mass is where the object is, in, is balanced in equilibrium. Now what happens is that an object's center of mass accelerates as a point particle, just as if all of its mass were concentrated in that one spot. This in turn means that the system will rotate around its center of mass, wherever that may be. This brings us to the idea of stability. When we talk about equilibrium, we really just mean that at the point we are talking about, net force and net torque is zero. This does not necessarily mean that the system is stable. Stable equilibrium simply means that if for a moment that the sum of the forces or the sum of the torques are not zero on that object, it will move back to its original position. 
Take the ball on the bowl. If you slide that ball up the side of the bowl and let it go, the ball will move around a bit, but eventually end up back in its original position of no net force and no net torque. In the second situation, the ball at the moment is in static equilibrium. There are no net forces and no net torques acting on the ball, and so it is not moving. However, if you were to give that ball a little push, it would roll down the side of the slope. If left to its own devices, that ball is not going to go back to its original position. And finally we have what is known as neutral equilibrium. The ball again starts in static equilibrium. We can apply a force in any direction and the ball will eventually come to a stop in a new static equilibrium. Now something to consider is that some systems in stable equilibrium are more stable than others. There are some objects that can be displaced a small amount and remain stable, but if you displace them a larger amount then they become unstable. This occurs when the center of mass is no longer above the base of support.